Thanks, Deb, for the introduction. I'm sorry I can't be with you all this evening. It looks like a very interesting program that's been put together. And Deb gave me the brief that I had to talk briefly about fertility and endometriosis and also to make it fun for you all. And I do realise that we've got a spectrum of various specialists down to patients with endometriosis. Um, and I can't sort of talk to one particular group, but I'll make it as interesting and uh, understandable as perhaps I can. And I've broken it down to five fundamental factors. And we're going to go through them individually, but here they are. Um, number one is fat the F word, so please don't become too fat with respect to your fertility. Number two is 40, so don't get too old. Number three is consider the other factors which may be going on inside your pelvis which are causing havoc to your eggs and your fertility. Fiddlers, well that's people like me who are the surgeons that come along and like to dig out your endometriosis and attack your ovaries, we'll talk about them later. And also the fifth factor, which is really two, is the finance for funding or your treatment and also egg freezing. One of the questions I get asked a lot by women who have endometriosis is uh, how will it, this affect my fertility in the future? And um, my previous gynaecologist said that I had to have babies, um, but I'm not ready to have babies. How long have I got? And if you think, well, Maybe 50% of the women coming into a IVF fertility clinic will have endometriosis. And maybe of all those women with endometriosis, 10 to 15 to 20% will have fertility problems because of their endometriosis. And if you think, well, maybe one in six couples in New Zealand will have fertility issues, then it actually is quite a common problem. And I think maybe it's a misconception perhaps in the past that everybody with endometriosis is going to have infertility. And I'd like to say, well, no, that's not the case. And in particular, if you get control of these five factors, then hopefully you won't have fertility issues. If we come to the first factor, which is probably the most non-PC factor, is of fat. So it's that horrible yellow stuff that we all have a little bit too much of. And uh, fat produces hormones, and those hormones will affect your ovaries to the extent, perhaps, that you don't actually ovulate or release the egg. And if you're not releasing the egg from your ovary, and there's all sorts of other hormones buzzing around, then you're not going to get pregnant. So if you are a little bit too fat, the best thing you can do is to lower your body mass index back down into that normal range and that will improve your fertility so many times fold, more than what I can do with my fancy drugs or my laparoscopic surgery. And the other factor is that if you are going to need IVF treatment or fertility treatment funded by the government, your body mass index has to be below 32 at this level, so try and lose a few kilos, it can do, the, do wonderful things. The next un-PC comment is of turning 40. And what I mean by that is don't leave it too late to have children. So yes, you have endometriosis, but the other problem that we have as women is that we form all our eggs, but they're given to us by our mum when we're 20 weeks inside your mummy's tummy. And then when you've born, you have even less. And each month you have kamikaze um, eggs, which just get released from your ovaries. Um, all the time, whether you're on the pill or on Depot Provera, it doesn't really matter. So your numbers are declining from when you were born all the way down. And when you get to about 35, 37, you're into those last few thousand, really. We have studies and tests that we can do, blood tests, which give us an indication as to how many eggs you may have left on your ovaries compared to somebody else of your age. But we don't have any tests for quality. And that's the other problem is that as you get older, it's a bit like your face. It gets a bit beaten up with age, and so do your eggs. And so that the eggs that you have are perhaps not as good as they were when you were 20, due to perhaps chromosomal problems, and the chromosomes within the eggs get a little bit tatty at the ends. And also the candy floss, or the stuffing within the egg, uh, gets a little bit older, and it doesn't function properly, and it doesn't drive that embryo so well. So we've got a poorer quality egg. And then if you're lucky enough to become pregnant with that poorer quality egg, there's a higher chance you're going to have a miscarriage also. So age is definitely a key factor. And a lot of us are leaving having child um, children until we're a little bit older. And we really should be looking at it before we're the age of 37. And yes, pregnancies do occur and you've seen it in the magazines. You know, Halle Berry had it when she was 46 and there's lots of you know babies out there. And they do occur, but you don't want to be one of those people at 42 not having children. 
you want to have thought about it a little bit sooner. And when you come to the factors, which is the third of my five, factors inside the pelvis which are having an influence on your fertility due to your endometriosis. So you can think, oh yes, the little black plaques which you've seen in the textbook or in your surgeon's photos of your pelvis, you can think, oh yeah, they cause a bit of scarring or if the anatomy of your pelvis is wildly distorted and your tubes are wrapped around the back of your ovaries and they're stuck to the back of your uterus, then they're not going to function properly. I can see that. But what else is going on there? You know, I've got a um, stage two endometriosis, there's a few plaques here and there, but I've got infertility as well. And that's the only factor. What could be happening in my pelvis which is influencing my fertility. So when you have an, uh, endometriosis in your pelvis, it's like your body sees it as an open wound, like a cut on your skin. And just like a cut on your skin, your body fires an immune response at it to try and heal it. Now some of the factors which it uses to heal the endometriosis can be harmful for your fertility. So they're called things like prostaglandins, leukotrienes, all these other fancy names. And they can interfere with the quality of the egg which is released. They can interfere with the pickup of that egg from the wee tube, the travel of that egg down the tube. They can interfere majorly with the lining of the uterus and the sort of on off switches of the lining of the uterus to harvest up that embryo. And they're also anti sperm. So we need to keep these factors dampened down as much as possible. Now part of that can be with medications and healthy lifestyle and the other factor is obviously getting in there and removing the disease with surgery. And that brings me to my fourth factor which is the fiddlers. I am a fiddler. A fiddler is a surgeon. Um, I would like to think that I would be a good fiddler um, and less of perhaps a fiddler. Um, but if you get somebody who's inside your pelvis doing a little bit of endometriosis surgery who doesn't really know what they're doing or hasn't got the experience, then potentially they can do more harm than good. And you don't want to be going back for repeated operations. And in, specifically, if you have cysts on your ovaries, you've got to keep the fiddlers away from your ovaries. Because if somebody sees a cyst on your ovary and they go after it and they chop it out, not only are they chopping out that cyst, but they're also chopping out all those lovely good eggs of which you can't make any more of. And with endometriosis, you may develop these cysts called endometriomas, which are also called chocolate cysts, because as surgeons, when we pop them, they're full of blood. They're a bit like old blood. They're a bit like a, a chocolate cream egg. So when you puncture them, all this yucky stuff comes out. Now, in the past, the temptation has been to chop that whole egg out of your ovary. And my practice now, certainly from a fertility point of view, has changed so that I will just lance that endometrioma and suck the goodies out without destroying the whole ovary. But that's from a fertility point of view. If you're doing it for pain, it's slightly different. And certainly if the endometrioma is more than four centimetres diameter, that can have major impact on your fertility. If it's less than that, you can leave it alone. And particularly if it's only a little one and it's right in the middle of your ovary, you don't want to go diving in there to harvest that tiny little egg, which is probably of no significance, but blast all your ovaries. Or even worse, to have a surgeon perhaps chop your whole ovary out because it potentially might be causing pain. No, 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 no. So choose your surgeon wisely is what I'm saying and keep them off your ovaries and when it comes to well, what's the evidence with surgery and endometriosis and fertility so definitely if you've got stage one stage two endometriosis if you do surgery that enhances your fertility for sure your natural fertility if you've got more severe endometriosis so stage three four if you're looking at your fertility and if you're doing IVF then the studies are not that clear. If you do surgery for stage three or four, it doesn't seem to make much difference in terms of your fertility and the outcomes when you do IVF. If you use drugs treatment, then that will probably help the outcome with IVF. However, it just makes really good sense to me. And I, you know, I don't, I'm not saying that I don't care what's in the literature, but I don't necessarily follow the literature. Sometimes surgery is more of an art than um, what's actually hard and fast written in the literature. So to me, if somebody's got stage three or four endometriosis, so yes, for their fertility, I'm going to go in there, clear it all out, get those factors down and recreate that anatomy because to me it just makes sense that that is going to improve your fertility. The other thing you can do to protect your ovaries is perhaps 
um, stop normal physiological cysts occurring on them. So suppress your ovarian function by perhaps going on the pill or other medication so that you don't get accidents happening on your ovaries so that nobody has to operate on them once again or chop them out. And then if we come to when we're talking about surgery, if we look at our fifth factor, which is the final factor, if we look at finance and egg freezing. So some of you might be lucky enough to have uh, medical health insurance, which will cover perhaps any surgery that you have and you get to choose your surgeon wisely. Um, if you don't have uh, private insurance, then you have to go through the public sector and you, not, you don't get to choose necessarily who your surgeon is. Um, another quick point to while I might add it is that if there is a family history of endometriosis and if you've got daughters, then you may want to consider strongly getting uh, private health insurance for them before they run into problems. And if you do have endometriosis and you do have fertility problems, there is government funding available to you if you're going to need IVF, but you have to qualify for that. So you have to have a body mass index less than 32, so don't get too fat. You have to be under the age of 40, uh, so don't get too old. Um, and you have to have a certain number of points to get you over that hurdle to get your government funding. Otherwise, you may want to pay for it, in which case if you're looking at an IVF cycle, that could be ten or $11,000. So it all gets a little bit too much. And if you also consider, well, maybe uh, we're delaying having our children until we're later, we've gone to university, we've gone out with a few guys, we've had a bit of painful periods, we've put off having surgery, uh, then finally we come off the pill, we think, oh yes, I might go and have a laparoscopy, I've got health insurance, that's great, I'll pay for that, I've met the man of my dreams, I want to have a baby, I start trying, it takes me a year, I go and see my GP, they do some tests on me, they say, oh, you don't have very good ovaries, oh my goodness, and then you find out that perhaps your partner's sperm count's not all that great, and you come to my doorstep as a, uh, a fertility specialist, and now you're 39, it's like, oh my goodness, then I'm running out of time, I've only got a few eggs left, perhaps the ones I've got are crappy, and because we've got these other factors going on, like the endometriosis and the sperm count, you know, I'm really looking down a really bleak tunnel at this stage, what could I have done sooner? And you could have perhaps considered egg freezing. So this is a technology which is relatively new. Um, you might have seen the Kardashians doing it. Um, what does it involve? It involves harvesting eggs from a woman when they are younger um, so that hopefully you will get more eggs from them and that the ones that you do get are of better quality. And now we have the technology so that we can snap freeze those eggs, a bit like the Watties peas. They go into the freezer, they can last there for 10 years, probably more, but 10 years at this stage um, legally. Um, and then if you want to use them, you just defrost them and then you can mix them with the sperm, create an embryo and pop the embryo back into a woman's uterus. That has the advantage that those eggs are of good quality and you've got good numbers of them. Now there's not great data out there about well, how successful is it and what are the facts and figures. We don't know yet because you know, a lot of women have perhaps frozen their eggs but not so many have come back to use them and, um, and we don't have all the literature on that but it certainly is perhaps the way uh, forward and perhaps you'd want to consider that if there's a family history of early menopause or if you've got very severe endometriosis and you're at a younger age. So those are my top five for fertility and endometriosis. So don't get too fat, don't turn 40 and get too old, keep the fiddlers off your ovaries, consider freezing your eggs and perhaps looking at the finance of what you're going to be faced with. And with endometriosis, consider all those other factors which are going on inside your pelvis, which are not necessarily what you see and keep your endometriosis under good control. Thank you for listening to me. I hope it's been a worthwhile uh, talk to listen to and I hope the rest of your evening goes well and that you have a great time in Wellington.